there have been at least seven people that I know in a very, very trying situation. I'm talking about situations that you would just say, wow, this week alone. Praise the Lord. And if you leave the situation as it is, some of them are pretty bad. I'm so glad that the way something looks doesn't have to always be the way it is. <laughs> Somebody know what I'm talking about. Put it in the atmosphere. It just looked that way. <laughs> oh my God, I could dance for two hours right there. Lord, I, you know, if there is no adjustment, if there is no movement, if there is no change, the way something appears could cause you to really not only lose faith in the circumstance, but you could lose your faith in God. Some people have lost their faith in God because the circumstance is contrary to the way that we saw it should be. When you say to yourself, this is how this should be. And when it is contrary, oftentimes, we say to ourselves, this is not the way it should be. But when you look at the circumstance as it is in its current form, you must always understand that it's not what it is in its current form. It is what it shall be when it is finished. Yes. Did you catch that? Uh -huh. Revelation can't be taught. It has to be caught. You got to catch it. That's right. You can teach information, but you can't teach revelation. Amen. Revelation has to be caught. You have to, you have to catch revelation. You, you can teach revelation, but you go, you know, you ever told somebody something and it just, the light bulb went off in your head and they're looking at you with that blank deal and the headlight look like what you just said. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. You caught it. But they didn't catch it yet. And then by tomorrow, maybe, you know, they'll wake up 3 o'clock and go, aha! And you're like, well, I got it yesterday, but I'm glad you caught up, baby. You cannot ever make final judgment on something simply as it is. We were riding over here this morning, and um, it started to rain real hard. And uh, one of my children said, God, please stop it. From rain and I understand because most of us when it is raining we then want it to stop stop this trouble stop this pain stop this circumstance but we need the revelation of what that rain is bringing I said did you realize and I put this question out for everybody with us today I said did you realize that some of the things that you really enjoy would that happen unless it rained? Children started asking like what? I said, what about the vegetables you eat? Praise the Lord. And not only the vegetables you eat, look at some of the things that come from the vegetables you eat. Everybody in my household likes ketchup except me. Praise the Lord. The ketchup comes from tomatoes. Well, tomatoes come from what? Has to be some rain. I said, so therefore, you want it to rain in order to get some of the things produced that you have a tendency to enjoy. Believe it or not, because we really, most of us have a stain on us that we really, in so many cases, take God for granted. Yes. The blessing that you operate in right now on. is only here after some trial, after some rain, yeah. that you pressed your way, that you danced your way, that you put on some galoshes and got out of, yeah. that you're able to enjoy today. Right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There's some of you that got peace in your household when you finally got some folk out of it. Oh. Some of you
when you finally got peace, praise the Lord, in your life, when God ran away from some folk, got them out of your way, praise the Lord. And so now you're able to, in a lot of cases, enjoy certain things because of that rain. And I, I'm here to tell you right now, there's nobody that likes it to, uh, to just rain in their lives, praise the Lord. And just... Looks like one trial after the next. Nobody likes that, praise the Lord. But we must always understand that those things are necessary to produce something in us that apparently without it, it would not have been produced. You will not have ketchup without tomatoes, and you will not have tomatoes without rain. We want to enjoy the byproduct of things that, uh, praise the Lord, that, that just we just wanted to come on us, praise the Lord. But believe it or not, even when the blessing of God fall upon you and is manifested in your life today, praise the Lord, it didn't happen today. There were some days and days and days, praise the Lord, that you have gone through certain things and went through certain things. And now that it's manifestation time, now you are enjoying it. This is why I've said it over and over again. And I'm going to say it until Jesus comes, praise the Lord. Don't get mad at somebody because God done blessed them. You don't know what they've been through to get that. Don't get mad now that payday done finally came for them. Praise the Lord. They're finally able to do some things and, and praise the Lord and finally able to walk in certain favors. And you, you said, well, they think they all are that. Honey, after you have been through what you've been through, you can stretch your head out and act like you all that. You got my permission. Go ahead and do it. You are all of that. Praise the Lord. There, there are some people that are going through what you've gone through and they don't quit God. They don't left the church. They don't left the things of God. They don't stop praying. They don't stop praising God. They don't stop believing God. Praise the Lord. And you went through the same hell they went through. But praise the Lord and bless God. You're still here by his grace. And when God decides that today is your day, I'm not going to stand in the way, honey. Go ahead and celebrate. Turn around and look at somebody and say, go ahead and celebrate. Praise the Lord. Yes. Oh my God, I didn't mean to get excited that early. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. The point is, main point is that if you belong to God, it's hard for us to see it sometimes, but if you belong to God, then God becomes obligated for you to end just the way you're supposed to end. Amen. That's the covenant. That's the agreement we have with God. The contract we got with God. Praise the Lord. He bought us with his blood. And so on one hand, we teach you that you must honor God with your body. You must pray. You must praise God. Those are responsibilities you have. But do you not know that the covenant also makes God responsible for certain things on your behalf? That ought to really make you shout because God will keep his part. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know. This particular story is it's just awesome story. It's just so much, it's so much to this story. I mean, if the story goes along with verse 37. The, the, the story talks about a prophet by the name of Elisha. Some of you may know a little bit about Elisha, but you know, Elisha was the servant of Elijah. That's right. Served the man of God. Matter of fact, before he is anointed to be prophet, the Bible doesn't record much about him at all, except for the fact that he was the servant of Elijah. Only thing the Bible records about Elisha until he starts performing is the fact that he is Elijah's servant. Amen. And now uh, that's good news for somebody. Uh, when you're serving, praise the Lord, people may not know who you are, but praise the Lord, they'll know who you are after a while. Okay, yeah, I just put that out there. Praise the Lord. We don't know nothing about Elisha while he is the servant of the Lord. When he is serving Elijah, we hear about Elijah. Praise the Lord. But Elisha was sitting right there and getting all of that anointing, getting all of that wisdom, picking up all of those good things, praise the Lord. So when the time came, God would use him tremendously. Praise the Lord. Now, you people may not know who you are when you are just a servant, praise the Lord. But bless God. If you just keep serving, God will continue to do what he wants to do in your life. Amen. So the Bible doesn't tell us much about Elisha until, praise the Lord, this whole story um, where God speaks to Elijah and tells him to go ahead and anoint uh, the heir apparent to his ministry. God tells Elijah that you need to now anoint somebody to take your place. Amen. I could imagine uh, how that conversation could have went, praise the Lord. 
Uh, he tells Elijah, you're about to come on home. And I thought, just like anybody else, if you hear God tell you you're about to come home, you're thinking you're about to die. Praise the Lord. Uh, but it didn't happen that way with Elijah, y'all. Some of y'all know about the Bible. My God, you want to talk about a great movie scene. Praise the Lord. God tells Elijah, go ahead and anoint your successor. Go to anoint somebody that's going to take your place. This is, this is what makes great people great. Amen. Great people see greatness in somebody else and are willing to produce them to make them better than they are. That's great people. Yes. I know some yes. folk that are fine as long as you're helping them out, but they don't want to ever help you do better than them. When I look at my children, I said, Lord, please make them better than me. That by the time they reach my age, they would have done twice as much for the kingdom of God than I have done, praise the Lord. And by the time they get to be 70, praise the Lord, their children would do twice as much as they have done. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to put this in the atmosphere. There's some of you in this room, there is no excuse for you to be better than me. Praise the Lord. Because if I'm a good example, you can supersede what I am. And it don't take nothing from who I am. So they do some of these people, I don't know what kind of faucet they were drinking from because they have the tendency to believe that if they make someone else great, praise the Lord, it makes them less, praise the Lord. But that's the spirit of Saul, praise the Lord. And I break that in the kingdom of God. Saul did not want David to be more blessed than he was, but in all reality, it's a compliment to you that you raised up somebody that caught what you had and now they've seen it and they are better. It's a compliment. God speaks to Elijah and said, go ahead and anoint somebody to take your place, praise the Lord. And, and uh, praise the Lord, the Bible talks about how Elijah and even Elisha, when he becomes um, the chief prophet, amen, they ran a school of prophets. They trained other prophets. Uh, if you notice in the Old Testament, the pastors of that day, uh, praise the Lord, the word of the Lord, if you will, that they came through the mouth of the prophet. Praise the Lord. The prophet was the one who was the one who was the spokesman of God. Amen. Yes. And so now uh, Elijah has a school of prophets. He has prophets everywhere that he is ministering to. But this particular prophet, Elisha, is chiefly anointed because, understand this, he is close enough to where he can just learn what Elijah is doing. But he's also um, has the right heart. Amen. So that he could take on what Elijah is taking on without this... Uh, 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 how can I put it? Without the arrogance of saying I am the now prophet of Israel. Praise the Lord. Because there is a difference between confidence and arrogance. Amen. Uh, arrogance says it's me that's doing this. Praise the Lord. And therefore I'm all that. But no. Uh, confidence says it's God through me. Yes. Amen. Yes. And God getting the glory out of this. And I'm going to allow God to get the glory out of this. Praise the Lord. Uh, you can tell the difference between one who is arrogant and one who is confident because the arrogant person tells you, uh, watch me. Point them, they point you to them. Praise the Lord. Uh, but the one who has confidence in God says, uh, look at God through me. Praise the Lord. See God through this. Praise the Lord. And you want to be around people that point you closer to God. How, how many people in your life that have led you closer to God? You see that? Those are the right people. Praise the Lord. Not closer to them, but closer to God. Amen. And there are a lot of people right now trying to get closer to flesh. But I'm trying to get closer to the spirit. They want to be close to somebody physically, but not close to them spiritually. Praise the Lord. So uh, Elijah, praise the Lord, knows that God is calling him home. And he says to Elisha, I am about to take a journey. I'm about to leave now. What do you want from me? Praise the Lord. He asks the question, what do you want from me? That is the one, one of the most awesome, awesome questions one could ever ask you. You know why? Because it puts the ball in their record, and now you find out what's important and critical to them. Praise the Lord. You find that uh, the Bible talks about Solomon. Amen. And he could have asked God for all the money in the world. He could have asked God for any things in the world. But he says, Lord, give me an understanding spirit. Give me wisdom so I can minister to your people effectively. And the Bible says God just leaned back in his throne and said, ah, I like that question, that answer. Praise the Lord. And then God said, now, because you've done this, I'll give you what you've asked for. And on top of it, I'm going to give you a complimentary blessing. I'm going to give you something to add to that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. What do you, what 
would you tell God if he asked you that question? What do you want me to do? Some people say, Lord, give me a house. Lord, uh, somebody give me a car. Lord, uh, give me flesh, praise the Lord. But you notice something in the Bible that when the real men of God, the real women of God were faced with that, they asked God for something spiritual, yes, something that could help them. Praise the Lord, understanding that they didn't have to ask for flesh because when you're in the spirit, right, flesh will come along with it. Yes. Catch that tomorrow morning. He asked, Elijah asked his servant, what do you want from me? And Elisha says something that is critical for us to understand. He says, I want a double portion of thy spirit. I want a, as much as you have done, I want to be able to produce you twice. Oh, he says, I want a double portion of what you operate in, praise the Lord. And somebody says, well, gosh, how could you ask for something like this? Praise the Lord. But understand the kingdom of God always operates in the realm that every realm is higher than the next. Every realm is greater than the next. That's how the kingdom of God operates. And when you operate the kingdom of God principles, uh, the one who is after should always supersede the one that is before it. Because you should operate in a better grace uh, tomorrow as you operate in today. Praise the Lord. In other words, 10 years go by, I should be at a higher level of anointing than I have right now. And 10 years from there, I should be higher. But also, ones who may be under my ministry now should be operating at a heavier level. Every ground goes higher and higher and higher. Praise the Lord. And so he asks him for a double portion of his spirit. And then Elijah tells Elisha, I tell you what, You've asked for something hard. You've asked for something uh, that in most cases would be very difficult. You know why? Because Elijah understands that he has no ability to give somebody a double portion of his spirit because he's not the one who gave him his spirit. Oh, you got all of these uh, so-called prophets in the land, so-called apostles in the land, and they telling people, I've seen it on YouTube, I've seen it all over, I've seen it in the church, where they're telling people, I'm going to give you a double, but well, it didn't come from you, it came from God. You can't give something that don't come from you. You can't give what you do not have, it comes from God. Elijah says, you ask for something hard, but nevertheless, Praise the Lord. If you hang around me close enough, you'll get it. Praise the Lord. Oh my God, he put God on display. He almost got confidence in God. Said, Lord, if the man stayed next to me, I trust you're going to do it for him. Oh. My God, he says this, praise the Lord. And so Elisha, amen, praise the Lord. And him and uh, the, his father in the ministry, Elijah, they cross over Jordan by supernatural powers. Uh, you want to see some super friends, you read the Old Testament. You will see some, read the New Testament. You will find some miraculous stuff in this Bible. And, uh, praise the Lord. George Lucas ain't got nothing on Elijah. Honey. You want to read some stuff. You want to see some stuff take place. You watch a man after God's own heart, God use him. You watch a woman who's been anointed by God. Oh my God, there's so much meat here. Praise the Lord. And so Elisha, the one in this story, hangs around Elijah. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says they crossed Jordan together uh, by miracle. Praise the Lord. They just crossed all over. They ice skated their way right on across Jordan. And when they got to the other side, praise the Lord, the Bible says uh, that there was a chariot of fire. Praise the Lord. A chariot full of fire came and separated Elisha from Elijah. Amen. And the Bible says, and a chariot of fire took Elijah out of his presence and he flew up into the sky. Oh my God. If you're going to go away, that's a good way to go. Amen. The Bible talks about that the mantle that was on Elijah fell on Elisha. So he got exactly what he had requested. Oh my God. Praise the Lord. And so now, Elisha begins to do uh, some awesome things. Amen. The story before this particular story was there was one of his prophets. Praise the Lord. Because he ran a school of prophets had passed. And the prophet's widow was left. And she did not have the things necessary. And so Elisha asked her, he said, what do you have? Praise the Lord. And she said, I don't have nothing. All I've got is some oil. Praise the Lord. <laughs> she said, all you got is some oil. 
He said, that's all you got is oil? Oh, praise the Lord. He said, well, I'll tell you what. Take, hallelujah, the oil you do have. Amen. And he says, go, praise the Lord, and find, uh, go to your neighbors and find every pot you can find in the village. Go to everybody in the city of Richmond and get a pot, praise the Lord, and come back to your house and take the little oil you have and pour it in that pot. And when she began to pour in that pot, she poured another pot. Every pot was full of oil. And then the man of God told her, now take all that oil and go sell it, and you'll pay off all your bills, honey, and have more for you and your sons to live. Praise the Lord. Anybody believe in God for that type of miracle to take place? I know the economy is bad, but I believe God will take a little bit and turn it into much. Oh, somebody ain't catch that. Oh, my. You say you ain't got much, but what you do have is enough for God. Oh, oh, somebody holler with me. I feel like it in the house. Praise the Lord. I'll give you a little meat real quick. Praise the Lord. It wasn't just a, a happenstance that all she had and that was oil. Praise the Lord. The oil symbolizes the presence and the spirit of God. And there's some of you right now, you take an inventory and you're looking at your little stuff and you say, Lord, I don't have anything. But praise be to God if you got oil left, you got everything. Yeah. You think you don't have anything, but you got everything. You got oil. They might be gone. He might be gone. She might be gone. That might be gone. But what you got left is a dollar. Because God will never clean you out. God will make sure you have enough to sustain God. The promise on your life requires God to leave something for you to sustain yourself tomorrow. Oh my God, I just said something. I said the promise on your life requires God to leave enough for you to survive tomorrow. Come on, I said, well, I lost everything. No, you didn't because you're still living. You did not lose everything. You lost a lot of stuff, but you did not lose everything. Because what you had left was enough for God to put his hands on it and cause his trees to come back to you. Praise the Lord. So if you look at the story, praise the Lord, from the outer view, praise the Lord, you look like you got a problem here. The prophet is dead, praise the Lord. Uh, amen. And the woman says, I have nothing, praise the Lord. And the woman and the prophet said, what do you have? She says, I just have a little oil, praise the Lord. Oh, my God, look at what God did, praise the Lord. So Elisha was on the heels of this particular miracle, uh, praise the Lord. And amen, amen. Every time he walked in uh, this particular town, shoot him, praise the Lord. The Bible says on this particular day, there was a great woman. Everybody say a great woman. Great. She was already great. She already had certain means. Amen. Praise the Lord. She already had some things. And this is, this is critical for some of us. Because we have a tendency to believe that God uh, only wants to bless people uh, financially. If you read this particular story, the woman didn't need no money. The last woman needed the money. The woman whose husband had passed. She needed the money. But this particular woman didn't need no money. And you read the story here. He says that they passed through, and this woman was a great woman, and she recognized, she had the discernment that this prophet was a man of God. And she so instead of him taking this long journey, him and his servant, and going on this long journey, we've been blessed so much that I can create a little sweet for the man of God in his servant. That's, I'm paraphrasing what happened. So she created a sweet for the man of God. Bible says, uh, verse number 10, let us make a little chamber, I pray thee. And let us sit there. I'm going to give him a bed, a table, a stool, and a candlestick. So that when he comes through town again, he'll have somewhere to stay. Oh, my God. Praise the Lord. That's what made her great. <laughs> she was great because she was a servant, you see. Praise the Lord. Some of you are not great because you are great in the eyesight of people. But God says you're great because of what you have served to people. Amen. So she, she creates this particular uh, place for the man of God. And praise the Lord. And you find that verse 11, verse 12, verse 13. The man of God sits back and he asks the question. He asks the servant. He says, what does this woman want us to do for her? Does she want us, because the prophet had favor with the king. He had favor, praise the Lord, with the people in the community. He said, does she need something in particular? What can I do for this woman as she has served us so well? And the woman says, man of God, I dwell with my own people. I don't need a thing. I'm good. I just made this room for you so I could bless you. There was no hidden agenda. Isn't it awesome to have people that just love you enough, that just want to give you? They're not even thinking about returning. They just want to bless you. My God. She didn't want nothing. That's why I told you that God is about to bring some complimentary blessings to you in addition to the promise. This woman was not asking for this, 
praise the Lord. She just wanted to bless the man of God in his service. She just wanted to aid the word of God. Amen. And so she says, I dwell with my own people. I have what I need. I am not in need of anything. And then he asks his servant, what can we offer this one? He asked the servant, what is it that she needs that we're missing? She says she don't need anything. She lived well enough that she had an extra room she could give us. Yes. We've asked her plainly to her face, what does she want us to do? And she said, I don't have need of anything. So he counsels with his servant and says, what can we do? Amen. It's another reason why it's important to really have somebody that really has your back. Because if somebody don't have your back, when you start to ask them questions, they'll get you in a ditch. Uh -huh. Some people, I don't want to know their opinion. Oh, see, I'm getting in trouble. Well, yes, praise the Lord. Where yes, am I? And you know, I got to come back here at least twice during a service. I said, some people, I don't, want, I don't care to know their opinion because I already know what they think of me. Let me put it this way. Some people's opinion, I don't want to hear because I know their opinion of me. Ain't that right, Lucy? Yes. But if I know you love me and know I, you love me for real, I can ask, what do you think about this? Because I know what's going to come out of your mouth is yes. going to aid yes. me yes. Yes. and not, um, oh God, annoy me. Yes. 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 It's right here in the text. And you see it right there. So he asked yes. Gehazi, his servant, what can we give this woman? What can we do for this woman? And so Gehazi, the servant of the Lord, who, and let me just talk about that particular thing for a second. The one who is anointed to be the servant of is not just there to serve, but to aid in every way possible. Uh -huh, you see, uh -huh. you're standing close enough to where you can learn something in the process and understand how you can help the circumstance, the situation. Yes, yes. He had knowledge that the prophet did not have. He says, the woman doesn't have a child. Prophet, this is what he tells Elisha. Mm -hmm. And her husband is too old to give her one. Y'all know what I'm saying about uh -huh, that. Uh -huh. Children's church is next week. <laughs> she is don't have a child and her husband's too old to give her one and the prophet said call her oh, oh, oh. Uh, lift your hands up and say Lord I thank you you're about to call me some of you about to get a call from Ohio you're about to get that call you're, oh my god unpredicted y'all unpredicted because you cannot see the story begin and figure out what in the world that she is about to walk in. You would have thought that the first thing that would have happened to her by opening up her house to the man of God, that maybe he'd go to lay hands on her and all of a sudden she start prophesying. You know what I'm saying? Or you could have thought, well, maybe God would make her just rich, rich, rich. Praise the Lord. There is no indication that she is in need of anything. Yes. Because he asked her point blank, what do you want? She could have said, give me a son. But she didn't even think that was important enough. In other words, she had learned to be content without something. And God says, but I want to still give it to you. There's somebody in the room, you learned to do without it. And God said, I still want to give it to you. Oh, my God. Woo. Jesus. Sometimes it ain't what you want. It's what God won't for you. Hallelujah. Oh. Lift your hands up and holler with me real good. Thank you.
what you ask for. Because you ask based on your carnal, fleshly knowledge of what you think you need. But I serve a God to see your whole picture. And God said, the way I want you to end, you got to have something to add to what you ask for. You need this and that because of what I'm about Hallelujah. I'm gonna need this might be this might be a part two, y'all. I can't even get out first 14. Did you get it? Did you get it? He said, call her. Huh? Woo. And when he called her, she stood at the door. Verse 15, she stood at the door. And he said, about this season, according to the time of life, you are going to embrace a son. Yes. And she said, Nay, my Lord, you man of God, don't lie to thy handmaid. You know, see, this is this is the part that we all get fit in verse 16, praise the Lord. Because if God by a whirlwind blow in your ear and tell you he's gonna do something, you always say, wait a minute, no, don't don't do that to me now. Do that. <laughs> you know you're getting excited because you really love, you really want it, you really like it, you really like what you hear, but the Lord don't 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 <laughs> Lord don't do that, don't, don't do that. <laughs> She said, Nay, my Lord, you, you man of God, don't, 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 don't mess with that. I'd rather you not promise it and just leave, leave that part alone. I, I, I was good without it, praise the Lord. But, the, but see, there are things that you may have desired, but you have gotten used to not having it, and you sort of get rid of it. But God knows what's go. God knows what's in the pit of your belly. Mm. I said the pit of your belly. You've got the belly, the part right here, but I'm talking about in the pit of your belly. I'm talking about in the center of the center of your belly. That there is something that will make this thing all complete. Amen. Now, I'm going to ask a question. God gave her the opportunity to access that which she could be benefited by. He let the man of God walk past her every day, her and him and his servant, or every season to where, praise the Lord, that she would see how she could help. She let him go right by and she saw. But the thing that I love about God is this. God oftentimes tests us in times we don't think we're being tested. I guess the question was, how often are you going to let this man walk past and you don't help him? She goes and she sets the house up for the man of God knowing, this is God now, knowing that when she did it, the man of God will want to bless her back. See, I set things in, this is why giving always sets you up to be better than when you start. Somebody didn't catch that. Giving always sets you up for increase. Because it puts a chain in motion. It gets things in motion to where God brings increase to you. It started by what she saw. She saw the man of God and his servant going back. But she probably wasn't the only one that saw it. But she the one that took notice and said, you know what? I'm going to create a crib for the man of God. She creates a suite for the man of God. Praise the Lord. The first Marriott. Amen. The Marriott is shooting at she creates this, no, and God, because he knows his servant, he knows Elisha's spirit. He knows that once this happens, Elisha's going to want to do something for her. So he allows her to see something which causes her to get something she could not have gotten unless she had saw something. Got a question for you. Who's walking past you all the time? Yeah. And the woman said, Nay, my Lord, don't lie to me. Thy hand be. I'm your servant. Don't, don't get me, don't get, don't get us excited about this. In verse 17, and the woman conceived. Oh my God. It doesn't leave no more room for no. <laughs> oh! Somebody holler with me right there. Oh! See, I'm causing you to holler because I'm, I want I want it to come from your belly. See, because that's where God is gonna get it from. He's gonna get it from the holler. He's gonna get it from your belly. It ain't gonna be no. Uh, it's gonna be. Uh, 
Ow! It's gonna be something way down on the inside that God's gonna bring for you. Tell your neighbor, it's in your belly. Ah, yes, sir. Yeah. Every time you feel that thing holler out, ah! And the woman conceived uh -huh. and bare a son yes. at the season that Elisha had said unto her according yes. to the time of life. Now we must understand this. Whenever you have received something from God, does not mean it won't ever be attacked by the enemy. Uh -huh. Or tested or tried. When the child was grown, it fell on a day. And when the Bible says when the child was grown, we're not talking about grown in the sense that we mean grown. We're not talking about grown in the, in the, in the sense of being uh, 18 or 21. Those, those ages are definitely something that is a Western cultural, yeah. um, civil, civilized nation type thing. 18 and 21 ain't biblical. That is something we have created. Praise yeah. the Lord. Um, when the Bible says and we're grown, they were grown in terms of the tradition of the local uh, people. Could have been the age of 12, could have been the age of 11, could have been 10. Praise the Lord, it wasn't that old because you'll find out later on that the man or the child was laying on his mother's bosom on the mother's knees. So obviously it was not a grown man as we would call grown. Amen? Amen. So when the child was grown, he fell on a particular day that he went out with his father uh, to the reapers. Amen? And he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to a lad, he told another child, Carry him to his mother. In other words, he's not feeling well. Carry him home. Let the mother nurse him. Praise the Lord. And the father, apparently not thinking it was this bad, obviously, because he stays out there with what? The reapers. Amen. And when he had brought him, he took him to his mother, and he sat on her what? Knees till noon and did die. Oh, my God. Everybody said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Brought him home to his mother, and he sat on her knees. So, obviously, the child was not that large sat on her knees until noon and then died. Praise the Lord. I love this one. I understand greater and greater why the Bible called her great. Notice in verse number, if you go to verse number 8, go back to verse number 8 real quick. And it fell on the day that Elisha passed to Shunem, where there was what? A great woman. The Bible called her great. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The yeah. Bible describes her as great. And sometimes yeah. When we think, see things like this, we want to know why they great. But if you keep reading this story and look at the faith of this woman, amen, that's why God called her great. She was great, praise the Lord. He called her great, praise the Lord. She was great because she thought enough, amen, to aid in the plan of God. Um, to share of her space. That was her space. That was her and her husband's house. Amen. It didn't belong to Elisha. It certainly didn't belong to Elisha and another brother. Amen. She opened her home to two different people. Praise the Lord. Amen. That, that the Bible called her great. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so now... When the word of God comes to the woman, she said, oh, God, don't do this to me. Don't lie to me. Praise the Lord. But apparently she received it. Amen. Uh -huh. Because the next thing we know is she burping a baby. Yes. Yes. Amen. She conceives. Amen. So she does receive that which is coming out of the man of God's mouth. So now, praise the Lord, the child is old enough at least to go out with his daddy and work. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. Gets sick, comes back on her knees, sets on her knees until noon and then dies. Oh my God. You would have thought at this point the story would end, praise the Lord, with the grieving period, the mourning period, and things of this nature. However, before she gets to that, she wants to make sure every stone is, is pushed away. She wants to make sure every alternative, amen, is used out. In other words, she's not willing to give up based on what she is looking at. I need somebody in the room to have that kind of faith. Everybody can't clap your hands with that, but that's all right. Praise the Lord. I clap my own hand. Praise the Lord. He, she says, she went up and she takes this child. Oh man, it's just so much symbolism and so much uh, prophetic symbolism here in the particular uh, verse of scripture. She, she, she takes the child up. Child's dead. Lays the child on the bed of the man of God. She doesn't lay the child on the child's own bed. She doesn't lay the child on her bed. She doesn't lay the child anywhere but on the man of God's bed. Oh my God. 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 She says, I'm gonna try to lay this child on something anointed. And I need somebody in here. You think it's dead, but put it on something anointed. Oh. I'll give you a moment to try to process that. 
You got 10 seconds to process it. It ain't living because it ain't connected to nothing alive. <laughs> In order for it to live, it got to be connected to something alive. <sighs> She lays it on the man of God's bed. And notice this. Now this is key now. This is why this woman is great. She lays him on the man of God's bed. And what does she do next? What does the Bible say she does next? She shuts the door. Upon him and went out. She don't want no interference with something she's trying to bring back to life. It's already dead. I don't need nothing else to happen. She shuts the door. When you are working on something for the kingdom of God, you've got to protect it until it comes to its potential. I'm teaching this morning. Y'all y'all getting this? You have to protect something until it gets to its potential. Even the butterfly got enough sense, praise the Lord. When he is, when he or she, praise the Lord, is a caterpillar. And they've already made it to where they are now able to be a butterfly. They create an environment where they have to protect their transformation. Oh my God. Because even they got enough sense to know that while they are being transitioned, somebody might want to come along and destroy it before they can fly. So even they create a cocoon to protect themselves. Praise the Lord while they're in transformation. Oh my God. Lift your hands up and say, Lord, I'm creating an environment where I'm protected until I wait for transformation. She shut the door. I'm teaching hard today. She shuts the door. And now she goes out. She called unto her husband and said, send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the asses. That I may run to the man of God and come again. If you want to use today's language, because remember now, they were wealthy, praise the Lord. They had, they had means. If you want to use the language, she told her husband, somebody pull my car to the front. Ah! Jesus! Pull my car around. And the Bible says that she may run to the man of God. In Jewish tradition, I've taught this before as it relates to the Lazarus thing. The thing that made Lazarus' situation so awesome was even the Jews believed under the right setting, under the right anointing, that within three days you still could be raised again. Uh -huh. So therefore, remember now, in this particular region, uh, they didn't travel places and get there in 15 minutes, 10 minutes. It could have been a day's journey, a couple of days' journey. That's why she said, I ain't got time for no mess. Bring me a good donkey because I got to get out of here. I got three days to get this boy back up. Because after that, it's over. Oh, Praise the Lord. Yes. Uh, be real nice to your neighbor and say, you better learn how to move quick sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you, you, you have to know the laws of the spirit concerning timing. Because there's a time to sit still. But when it's time to move, you better get to it. There are times to which if I don't preach it that day, I might not be able to preach it. I got to preach it when God said, do it, do it now, do it now. The Lord, I prepared that. No, 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 do it now, do it now, do it now. Because there's a season that somebody got to operate in and I can't afford to have you mess it up. Preach it now. Yes, I may run to the name of God and come again. In other words, and she said, and come again. See, that brings out what I was saying. She said, I gotta have enough time to get to him, to get back here to this child that's in the bed. So in other words, she had to double her journey, right? Because obviously, she wanted to be able to get to Elisha and get back to the house in time. This woman was great. And the, the husband says this, why are you gonna go to him today? It is not the new moon, nor the Sabbath. In this particular uh, time of scripture reference, when it was Sabbath, they had access always. When it was the Sabbath day, that's the day they hear from the preacher. The new moon was also a season to which, it's almost like a convocation, if you will, where the prophets would come around and minister to the people in their region. So it wasn't convocation, and it wasn't the Sabbath day. Praise the Lord. 
But when you connected to somebody anointed, I don't care if it ain't Sunday. They anointed on Tuesday. Let me tell you something. My anointing don't just flow on Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. I'll work it up Thursday night, Friday night, Sunday morning, or Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday 3 a.m. It don't make no difference. If you're anointed, you just anointed. Be nice to your neighbor and say, you blessed every day of the week. Now get this now. This is, this is, and I'm going to get myself in trouble. I'm going to need my bush here when I say what I'm about to say. You got to want something bad enough that you don't care who is in the way. Her own husband said, this ain't the day you call on, but she got a question. I'd rather make that man mad or want my son to live. Yes. Yes. Some folk, I'd just rather have you mad at me. They get over it when they see the miracle God gonna bring the past. They get over it when they see the Lord coming back to life. Bible verses speaking to us, right? Yes, they are. It's not the new moon. It's not the Sabbath. It is not when we would normally be uh, aided by the prophet. It is out of season, if you will. This is why Paul told Timothy, you're going to have to preach in season and out of season. In season is when they're expecting the word And out of season when they ain't expecting the word I came Thursday night all prepared to teach And I really wanted to teach, praise the Lord But God changed the season You will not teach tonight You will bless the people of God tonight And that's what I had to do In other words No matter what you are prepared to do God is the author of all seasons He decides when we must operate In another level he determines when we move into another flow. Because guess what? He is in charge. That's why there are times to which I am prepared to do one thing. And God has trained me, especially since I've opened this church up, to do it when he says do it. Regardless of what y'all's looking at, no matter what any faces I see, I got to go with what he says. And then after God is finished and everybody in here know we did it the right way. This is why you must be convinced of what God is telling you to do. So, she said, bring my car around. And bring me somebody that can drive because I don't need nobody slow today. Praise the Lord. Get, get my good car out here. I don't want the one with the engine light on. I don't want the one with the tires of ball, may pop tire. I press our dog. She our dog. She our When you got to get somewhere fast, you want a driver that will drive. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about, praise the Lord. We went somewhere, Billy, and I told you, I said, hit it. I said, if you get a ticket, I'll pay. Just get that. Praise the Lord. And there are times in your life when you can't carry somebody a shotgun who ain't ready to roll. <laughs> oh, my God. Praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, you, you want to ride shotgun with me. You got to be ready to roll when I'm ready to roll. Praise the Lord. Like, hit it, baby. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Because it was a matter of life and death. Some things, when God tells you something, you must have that in your spirit. It's critical if God says, do it. How often do we disobey the voice of God because we think even his small commandments are not that important? When it's a matter of life and death. I've had people tell me, I'm glad you preached that today because tomorrow I was about to, oh my God. We think we just show up to show up. No, no, no. If God tells you to get out of your bed and go to church, you better run. If God tells you to get here on Thursday, you better run because it could be the word you need to hear for the next day. Lord, help us. And she said, Wherefore, why would you go to him today? It is not the new moon. It is not the Sabbath. And I have to understand this in the position that the husband was in. He's in a position where a lot of us will find ourselves. Can't do nothing about it anyway. It's not the time that you can talk to the man of God. It's not the time to where anything can happen. The child is dead. Praise the Lord. 
But then the mother says, the child might be dead, but I'm going to do everything to bring him back to life. If I got to have a funeral, I'm going to fight before I get there. I'll uh, see y'all see, 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 if I got to have a funeral, I'm going to do everything I can to prevent it. I'll see y'all, see, see, I, I heard somebody the other day were talking about health and they were saying, we all got to die from something anyway. I said, okay, so then you're saying, uh, this doesn't make any difference because you're going to die anyway, right? I said, okay, well you go right ahead, sweetheart. Praise the Lord. I know I got to die someday, but I'm.